Okay, here's a quick demo. Now, I apologize, I'm shooting this straight from the camera to the screen, so the resolution's got some issues, and you may see my hands come up occasionally. But uh, anyway, here's the point. Uh, the dynamic uh, menuing system, writing an app, getting to do the shell from scratch, some fun stuff. Thought some people might be interested in this. So basically, here's you know, our prototype. You got a uh, kind of a metro look here for you know some buttons. You click them, they you know they fire up things. Um, you know, boom, boom, boom. La -da, 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 da So basically, now here's the cool part. The cool part is that these buttons here, one, two, three, you'll see are stored in the database. One, two, three. So we're going to add one and just demonstrate how easy it is to do that. We call it uh, the module called Forms Color, and uh, we don't want to write the button, the text on the button. Uh, we have to name the user control that gets built for that. Uh, we need to put a tab order in, give it a shortcut key so that you can access it from the keyboard, and. There's rights mask, that doesn't really mean anything at this point, but it will at some point. What it needs to say on the tab uh, when it loads, and then an actual physical position on the screen. And then there's a place for an image, but we're not going to do that at this moment. And you can see when we bring that back and refresh the screen, boom, there's this button loaded, no image loaded. When we click it, Boom, it automatically loads. All there from, all dynamically using reflection through the database. So, uh, let me show you this real quick. I actually have built in here um, this little thing right here. We can come and we can edit it. And then I can load a button here, save it. And we go back out here. Boom. There we go. Dynamically refreshed buttons. So maintenance of whatever you've got going on, uh, pushing things out to people so long as the object exists in the in the compile is pretty easy. So, okay, so what happens if it's not in the compile? Let's move on to that. So what we have, I have a little Thing. In fact, let's go back to the database real quick. And I've got um, a table here of some artists. We'll just use it as an example uh, listed here. So let's build a data entry screen for that table. So what I'm going to do is I have another program that I've written that is a code writer. It, connects to the database here. I already got the credentials in here. I will pick artist. I will say I want to build a business layer object. Uh, there's the, the namespace for it. I'm going to also build a GUI object with the namespace for that one. See, so it comes in here, reads this, and sees all the fields that it needs to do. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to click Write Files. Boom, they're done. Close that. OK, so the artist object that needs to go into um, the business layer. Done. The user control there is going to go into the GUI layer. Done. Now we'll go over to our Visual Studio. We'll come in here to the business layer and we will add the existing item of that object. We'll go to the GUI layer, and we will add the existing object there, and then we will run it again. Now, we'll have to build the menu into the, into the database, which is pretty easy to do. We're going to come in here, and we're going to call it, um, actually, let's stop real quick. Um, Let's manually remove that one, just because it was just an example of showing that. And so then we come in here. Michael Armitage, ah. manufacturing office. You can get a little uh, extra at work uh, commentary there. Okay, so now that we refresh that, 
that makes that go away. So again, we'll bring this back up. I'll build this in here. We're going to call it artist. The user control is called artist. This is what we just built. The tab order, I can't remember, but that ought to be. It should be like that, I think. Um, we're going to put that on the F3 button. Michael Continental on line one. Michael <laughs> Armitage Continental <laughs> line one. See? Isn't that great? I wonder if I can edit that out later, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. This is just for. It doesn't really matter. So, uh, artist screen. That way it says that up there. And we will again say 135, 270. Um, let's load. I don't think I've got any pictures, so who cares? Uh, and we'll save that. Okay, get rid of that. All right, here's our artists. You can again see how we've got a basic data entry screen. Uh, we, with, you know, if I was to search for for something, if I was to say like Britney, but I didn't spell it all the way out, Britney Spirit, boom, loaded it right up. Um, if I came in here and type the letter A and search for it, I get these results. And, uh, you know, ooh, look, ABBA. Ooh, okay. So, that's that. Now, so, so what? Anybody in Code Builder can do that. Not a big deal, right? Okay. Well, here's where the cool part really comes in. This is where the uh, inner geek is going to come through for you guys especially developers out there that you're going to love this. So now let's go gen albums. Now in albums, we're going to need to tie that to uh, an artist. So we're going to have a combo box and um, that combo box needs to pull a list of the artists because it's doing it by ID. Well, obviously you don't want the ID displaying in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to load the assembly of the business layer and you're going to see that I get all my objects here well I want to tie that to the artist list item by the way three different interfaces get created um, for each uh, database object was well, list item which basically gives you the ID and the de description then you get the, the raw table and then you get an entity which will is more like a view that spreads out etc cetera, etc cetera. that's not really important but that's just that's what's going on. So I'm going to go write these files. They're done. All right, you'll see that uh, there. It looks like I may have let me refresh the screen. It looks like I may have forgotten to build the uh, business layer. Let me do that real quick. Okay. Okay. Again, business layer goes into the business layer. The GUI goes into the GUI. All right. Now we're going to open up here and we're going to add this object. So we have all our business rules set. And now you got your load, save, edit, all that stuff, uh, all the you know, validation, all built into that business object uh, based off the states of uh, the database and some general design that I've set standards for. So we're going to add it to the existing item over here in the GUI. And there it is. And again, we will you know, go to our database. We'll call it albums. But again, I could do that through the interface if I wanted to, but I'll just type it in again here real quick. UCTRL album. Make sure I spell it correctly. Go over here. Yeah. Yeah, album. There it is. Uh, me, my tab order is messed up there, but I'm not going to worry about that at the moment. Um, shortcut keys. We'll actually call this Shift Dash F3. Permissions for who can see it. Is it active? And then album. Um, Again, we'll put this button right underneath the other button. And we won't worry about any data. So 
run the application again, making a connection to the database. Boom, here we have our, our artist and then our album. Looks like it'd be nice if I put some uh, graphics to it, but that's not important. I'm going to click the album. And so here's this data entry screen for that. Again, with, you know, our, let's go ahead and start doing a new one here. Let's say we're going to add Arrival by, and we know that's by ABBA in 1973. And we start typing, and look, it auto fills based on what I'm typing. So um, I can automatically just pick ABBA. It's tied directly to the other object, complete linkage. So that's, uh, I save that sucker in the database. We're ready to go. Um, again, force a search, It'll load it. Obviously, I've got something wired up a little bit incorrectly there because it didn't load it, but yeah, a couple of typos somewhere. I'm sure I'll figure that out. But you get the general concept of where I'm going with this. The, uh, the next step after I find that little bug I just discovered in this demo is again to then wire up. Notice I got this. I've got this build child UI so that if there is a parent child relationship, that you know the grids for all the multiple lines underneath the parent can get filled in and automatically created. Obviously, it's not going to do business rules, not going to do a lot of things. But it builds the framework so that I can just go through there. We add stuff, boom. We can dynamically add it on the fly. It handles so much of the stuff. So anyway, just thought you guys might like to see that. All right, thanks.